Windows 10 and ARM is starting to catch on, and now Lenovo is on the scene with their Mix 630. Today I'm gonna to compare and contrast it with the HP NVX2 and tell you which one is better. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, don't adjust your set. If the Lenovo Mix 630 looks a lot like the HP NVX2 to you, well, that's not coincidence. And no, Lenovo is not copying HP. What's happening here is Qualcomm had a reference design for this tablet and form factor, and HP and Lenovo both made their own iterations of it basically tidying it up and adding their own little flair to it. So yes, this device is very similar to the X2, but Lenovo has done a few little tricks here to make it their own, and I kind of like some of the decisions they made, although not all of it is perfect either. Here it is, the Lenovo Mix 630. It has that usual leather folio keyboard combination, which comes in the box. Very minimalist logo here, as you can see with Lenovo's uh, lettering on the side. Uh, you can barely see that. Other than that, there's nothing else on this. It is a black, you know, leather-ish material. It's gonna pick up dirt and grease pretty easily, but uh, for those of you guys who are Lenovo fans and like jet black, well, this is a pretty solid design here. You still also have the hinge here on the back for the kickstand. It's a very stiff hinge. They did a great job with it. And it's a little bit more muted than HP's, but uh, overall works pretty well. All right, opening up the device, you get your familiar 12.3 inch display. This is gonna be full HD plus 1920 by 1280 is IPS. Again, a similar display to HP's, although I will say the blacks are a little bit deeper on this device, which blends in nicely with those bezels. And yes, those bezels are a little bit thicker. Again, reference design device here. They haven't changed up too much here, but if you're gonna hold this device a lot, those bezels work out pretty well. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but it is this design. You do, though, on top here, have a five megapixel front-facing camera, dual IR, Windows Hello. That's actually an improvement over HP, who's using a single IR camera, and it actually does make a difference. I find the Windows Hello on here just a tad faster, a little bit more reliable than HP's. In terms of screen brightness, Lenovo is siding around 400 nits, and I would say it's pretty accurate. It gets very bright outside, and you shouldn't have any issues. It is a glossy display, though, so you will get some reflection. But overall, very good display, very happy with it. When it comes to speakers, you get two of them. They are on the side here. This is an all-metal unibody design, and you can see it's nicely cut. I think Lenovo did an excellent job in terms of the machining of this device. It just feels really solid. And it feels a little bit different than HP's, which is also metal, but this one has got a lot, a lot more angles to it. Now, these speakers are really good. Same quality as HP's, in my opinion. The difference is they fire from the sides, so they don't actually hit your ears as well, but they're still very loud speakers, very clear. I really like the audio on this device that's partially due to Qualcomm who's using their own proprietary audio system on here and it works out well. Now on the left hand side here you do have a SIM card slot and that's actually both SIM and micro SD on the single tray which is a bit of a change from HP who separate them. But other than that you still get the expansion here with micro SD. I should also say that Lenovo throws in an actual eSIM with this device which is really interesting. So an eSIM is a programmable SIM chip that resides on the device and that card. So you can swap this out with Sprint which is also running a deal with this device when you buy it on Amazon then you get Sprint free data throughout 2018, and I did that as well. But Lenovo will also allow you to connect up to Lenovo Connect, which is their data service going through a third party, and they give you free one gigabyte of data for the first month, and then you can re-up it through the service itself. That's really interesting though, as this allows Lenovo to save some money by putting an eSIM into this device so it can ship worldwide, and it just activates in your country on a local carrier. Really need to see that actually finally happening. Take a look at the keyboard deck and you do get Lenovo's familiar smile design on their keys. It's a really good keyboard. It's, you know, it's Lenovo, can't complain too much. I do find HP's keyboard actually a little bit better. It's personal preference though. Nothing wrong with this. You also get two stage backlighting versus HP, who only has one stage. Not a huge difference, but you know, nice to have that option as well. And they do have all their function keys a little bit differently placed, but you still get dedicated keys for brightness and volume, which is a nice touch. Looking at the deck itself, it's kind of a metal design, and they actually put magnets in here at the top, so it allows it to stick to the display. That's another change over HP. It's a nice little touch. Uh, it gives you a little extra effort to open it up, but it stays closed all the time, which is really nice. That trackpad is full precision drivers. I had no problems. It's a very smooth trackpad, glass, 
nice size as well. It's technically a little bit taller than HP's. Now, HP does use a long trackpad, but this one's actually a little bit taller. Um, I'm really no complaints. I think this one actually works a little bit better. I'm not a huge fan of the long one uh, from HP, but overall, very good trackpad here. Coming around to the right-hand side here, you do have dedicated volume switches. You can see they did some nice labeling there. Resides above the speaker here, grill on the side. And you do get a single USB Type-C port here at the bottom that is USB 3.1. That means you can do display out, you can do auxiliary power, and of course, data. So it's a very good port, but you only get one of them, so make sure you use it wisely. Finally, on the back here, you can see the antenna lines for where the LTE and Wi-Fi resides. That's why it's always a different color. That basically has to be a different material, so the signal goes out. Really good design, though. And you do get that 13 megapixel rear camera. So again, you're using the same cameras as HP, reference design, 5 megapixel front, 13 megapixel rear, autofocus, very good camera. Difference here, it is placed on the corner versus the middle uh, where HP uses it. And it does have a little bit of a ridge around it for some protection. So it sticks out a little bit because it curves around. Uh, very good camera though, really no complaints at all. All right, let's talk a little bit about performance and the specifications here internally. So we are still talking a Snapdragon 835. For those of you holding out for a Snapdragon 850, we're still not expecting that until later in 2018, which means, yes, you may want to hold off on buying this device. However, if you still really kind of want this, I actually still recommend it. I love Snapdragon 835. It's for me. It doesn't mean it's for you, though, so make sure you take into consideration here. That means it is running Windows 10 in S mode. Now, you can unlock it to Windows 10 Pro, so you're technically getting a Pro license with this device. That's pretty important. If you stick with store apps, you're not gonna have any problems. That's primarily what I do. I haven't actually even unlocked this yet. I do run a lot of my devices, including Surface Laptop and S mode. That's me. If you really need that old legacy app though, you may have an issue here. This can run those apps, but as soon as you start running Win32 apps outside the store, you only run to a little bit of a performance hit. It's certainly acceptable in my opinion, but everybody has different thresholds. Now, when it comes to RAM, we were talking four gigabytes of DDR4. Again, that's the same as what HP is using in their device as well. So DDR4 is pretty solid RAM. It's very fast and it's going to be very power efficient. So that's excellent. When it comes to storage, you're talking 128 gigabytes and they're using a Samsung drive in this. Now it is EUFS, which again, same thing that HP is using, but this Samsung drive is actually one of the faster ones out there. So you're talking around 704 read speeds and around 200, 224 right and it's actually a big improvement over what HP is using and normally I wouldn't make this as a big deal but obviously in this kind of device all that low performance gain is going to matter. And I have to say, using this device, I had no issues whatsoever in terms of lag. When I was launching and just running Windows 10 as an operating system and sticking to store apps, the performance was very good for me. Now, when it comes to battery, it's a 48 watt hour battery. It's actually like one watt hour lower than what HP is using. So really negligible difference there. Now you're talking around 16 to 18 hours of battery life, depending on how you're going to use it. Uh, I'll just say it's been very good battery life. You can easily go two to three days of regular usage of this device without having to recharge it. And of course, you're going to use that USB Type-C charger in the box that Lenovo gives you. It's a really nice size charger as well and gets the job done. But you can use any Type-C charger you want with this, including when it goes up to 100 watts for very fast charging. When it comes to cellular performance, it's very similar to HP. Now I'm using the Sprint data sim with this device at the time. And I haven't used Sprint in many years, but I've actually been pretty happy with it. The upload speeds are not as good as AT&T, at least where I am, but download speeds have been very good. I'm hitting between 60 and 80 megabits per second downloads, and that's only around three bars. So it gets very good speed. And that's one thing I really love with these Qualcomm chips is you're going to get very good LTE performance. You still, of course, get that instant on ability too, meaning I can leave this device off, you know, off for five days and come up to it, hit that power button. It's going to turn on instantly. Another ability of this device, because it's always on, is you can leave Cortana on, which means you can call Cortana up at any time using those microphones. Even when the device is closed with that lid, it still responds, which is kind of a fun thing to have, something that laptops really can't do right now. Now. All right, let's bring it all in. I have no major complaints with the Lenovo Mix 630. Now it does price at $899 
which is technically $100 cheaper than what HP is offering for the NVX2, but the NVX2 has also been on sale for $899, and on Amazon has gone as low as $870, so it's gonna be very comparable in price. Now, this device is about nearly a half pound heavier than the HP NVX2, and that's solely due to the materials used, so it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit heavier. I'm not sure that matters for everybody, but the NVX2 is noticeably lighter. Now, if the Mix 630 was heavier and you got something out of it for that heaviness, it would be okay, but you're not getting any better battery life here or necessarily any better performance. Now, I do like some things that Lenovo has done here. That dual IR camera works better than HP's. The storage is a little bit faster as well. The keyboard's pretty good. I do prefer HP's as well, but this is really just personal preference. Anything about this device, though, is really nice. You do get a pen in the box, too. It's an active pen. Again, very nice. Matches what HP is offering here. So I believe it's around 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity. I had no issues drawing with it, though. And it's just a really good deal. You're getting all that in the box. Now, obviously, the elephant in the room here is going to be Surface Go, which is just announced recently. And a lot of people will compare the price there. But don't forget, Surface Go has half the storage, at least at that 399 model. And it's not going to be as good performance. It's EMMC. So it's going to be a little bit less performance there. You're also not getting the keyboard. You're also not going to get a pen. You're also not getting LTE. You're also not going to get instant on abilities. And you're going to get much shorter battery life. I think performance for Store apps is going to be very similar between these devices, but where the Surface Go will beat out these devices is when you start using apps outside the store, and that's really going to be the benefit there. Now, who should buy this? Well, for this price, you are getting everything in one box, which I really enjoy. It's going to be really good for, I would say, students, for artists, for journalists and for people who do a lot of writing, for people who are realtors and need to be on the go all the time, I think this is gonna be a solid device. It's one of my favorites. I'm still sticking with Windows 10 and ARM. I know it's not for everybody, but if you really need an always connected PC, these are a lot of fun. As far as choosing between HP and Lenovo, it's really gonna be a personal decision. You just have to weigh out which is better. I think the HP's one is gonna be a little bit lighter and easier to carry, but Lenovo has done some fun things as well. I should also mention that later in 2018, we are expecting the Snapdragon 850 with around 30% performance improvement coming out. Whether or not this device gets refreshed with it, I'm not certain, I'm sure it will be, so you may want to hold off until that device. But if you need this right now, it may be a good purchase if you can find it on sale. All right, so there's a quick review of the Lenovo Mix 630, which is now available. If you want more information about this device, make sure you click that link in the description below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.